Hi everyone, my name is Cole, and I'm a data scientist working on the product recommendations team at Wayfair. Today I'm going to talk about how we evaluate recommender systems. So imagine you're a data scientist at Wayfair, and you've built out a fancy new recommender system, and you want to test against the old one that's on site. But how do you actually go about proving that the new recommender system is better than the old? Well, a common approach to doing this is actually running an online A-B test. So in an A-B test, what we do is we split the traffic into two groups. One group, called the control, gets recommendations from the old model. Another group, called the variation, gets recommendations from the new model. And so we run this online A-B test for some designated amount of time, and we try to find if there's a significant lift between customers and the variation and customers in the control. So we might look at a target KPI like conversion rate, for example. But there's downside to running an online A-B test. So one of the issues is it takes a lot of coordination and effort from multiple teams at Wayfair to deploy and QA a model on site. Another issue is that running an online A-B test takes time, sometimes several weeks or even months, depending on the amount of traffic. So ideally, what we'd like to do is find a way that we can evaluate these models offline. So if you have experience building machine learning models in the past, this is kind of a workflow that you're pretty familiar with. So basically, you have your data, and you split it into a data set called the training set and the test set. And you'll use the training set to actually train the model. And once you're done training your baseline and your new model, you'll predict it on the test set. And then you'll use some metric to compare the two. So an example is if you have a regression type model, you might use something like the mean squared root error. But if you have like a classification type model, you might use accuracy or area under the ROC curve, something like that. So with recommender systems, it's kind of very similar in the case that you have this training and test split. Uh, the main difference is in the fact that recommender systems, the final output isn't some discrete or continuous variable. It's usually a list of sorted items. So when we think about a metric that we use to actually evaluate these recommender systems, uh, we mainly use them to determine uh, whether the items we get from the recommender systems are relevant to the customer. So one of these metrics is called the cumulative gain. So to get the cumulative gain, what we do is we take the sum from i equals 1 to k where k is the number of recommendations that we're serving to the customer. And we take the sum of this graded relevance score. So the relevance score can be something really simple. So like at Wayfair, uh, the relevance score might be a binary where one is where the customer has viewed or added to cart a product at position i, or zero if they haven't interacted with it at all. So let's break down this metric using a visual example. So say we set k equal to 10. So that would mean we're serving 10 recommendations to the customer. And of these 10 recommendations, two of the recommendations the customer has actually viewed. So in this example, they viewed the recommendation at position 1 and the recommendation at position 3. So if we take the relevant scores of each product in these positions, we find that for the product position one, the relevant score is one. And for the product position three, it's also one. And for the rest of the products, they're zero. And then when we take the sum of all these relevant scores, we get a cumulative gain equals to two. So that's a really good start to evaluating a recommender system, uh, but it doesn't really tell the full story, right? So imagine I actually give you a full page of recommendations. Uh, what is the chance that you're actually going to see the first recommendation versus seeing like the 20th or scrolling all the way down even seeing the 100th? So really what we want in our evaluation metric is to have some notion of rewarding a recommender system that boosts relevant items near the top of the sort. Uh, so one of these metrics is called the discount cumulative gain or DCG. So to get DCG, it's actually really simple. We just take the same formula 
that we got for the cumulative gain, so the sum from i equals 1 to k of the relevant scores, and we divide it by some reduction factor. So a really common formula for this is just the base 2 log of i plus 1. So this gives us the effect of as we go down further, further down the sort, so as i grows, we'll be reducing the relevant score. So let's go back to our example. So if we look back at our list of 10 sorted items, we'll find that the reduction factor for item 1 is just 1, because the base log 2, base 2 log 2 is just equal to 1. So the relevant score at position 1 doesn't change. However, the relevant score at position 3, we now have a reduction factor of 2, because log, base 2 log of 4 equals 2. So now this causes the relevant score to be reduced in half. So it's 1 over 2, and that means when we sum all these relevant scores up, we get DCG equals to 1.5. So now that you have DCG, there's plenty of ways to modify this. You could think about scaling the relevant score. So maybe you assign relevant score, instead of it being a binary, you assign it to 1 if they viewed it, 2 if they added to cart, 3 if they ordered, and so on. Uh, another common extension of discounted cumulative gain is something called normalized discounted cumulative gain. So what is normalized discounted cumulative gain? So to get, or NDCG, so to get NDCG, all you do is to take, is take the DCG score and divide it by something called the idealized discounted cumulative gain. So what is the idealized, uh, idealized discounted cumulative gain? Well, all it's saying is if I had a perfect sort, what would the DCG be? So in order to actually visualize this, let's go back to our example. So if I had the perfect sort here, what would that, what would that look like? Well, obviously I'd want a relevant item in position one, but I'd also want a relevant item in position two. So really what I'd want is for my recommendation at position three to go up to the position two. So when you do the math behind this, you find that the DCG for the perfect sort is approximately about 1.64. So that means when we run NDCG, we get the value 1.5 divided by 1.64, which is approximately 0.9. So the main advantage between using NDCG and DCG is that it allows us to better compare these evaluation metrics between customers. So the idea is that certain customers might be more difficult to score than others. So it gives us the effect of normalizing our DCG scores to be a value between zero and one, which is really nice. Uh, so anyways, guys, that's been an overview of NDCG for evaluating recommender systems. Um, obviously, there's like a lot of other valid metrics that you can use for recommender systems in the broader subject of information retrieval that I encourage you to explore. Uh, one of the main things to remember is that while it's relatively straightforward to measure how effective a recommender system is at predicting what a customer ended up adding to cart or viewing, it's actually much harder to measure if a customer would have engaged with your rec recommendations how do you actually deploy that to site? So basically what that means is that we should never use offline evaluation to replace our online A-B tests. We just use it to help prioritize what we're going to test next. But yeah, anyways, that's all I have. And check back again for more videos discovering the projects we have at Wayfair Data Science.